Hi, I'm Matt Lenhard, and today I'm going to walk you through getting started deploying and running BCC in your Kubernetes cluster, as well as some of the lessons I've learned and mistakes I've made along the way. I've also set up an example repo that has a sample BCC application that you can modify and have to phone home or maybe ping some other application. It also has all of the necessary Docker files and uh, Kubernetes deployment file that you'll need to get up and running. So the first step is to set up the init container. And what the init container is going to do is it's going to install the necessary Linux headers onto all of your nodes. And since we're running this as a daemon set, it will automatically install the necessary headers onto you know, any new node that you add into your application. I also wanted to give a shout out to the kubectl trace team for putting together a simple bash script that will grab the current uh, Linux kernel version and install the necessary Linux headers package to match that version. I've tested this out, out across uh, GKE, uh, AKS, uh, EKS, and just vanilla Kubernetes installs through like COPS and it's worked every time. It's really an awesome script. So shout out to them. The next step is to set up the necessary BCC container. Uh, that's where you're actually gonna run the BCC application from. You could run one of their tools or modify it to your own custom application. Like I said earlier, maybe you wanna phone home and do some data analysis from what you found. But yeah, the, it's pretty simple. You're gonna install like the necessary packages to get everything up and running. And then you're gonna build BCC from source. And then at the bottom there, we're just running uh, the file through Python interpreter. If you wanted to extend this a little bit, you could copy the files over to something smaller than Ubuntu, uh, maybe like Alpine or another uh, image source. The next step is setting up the Kubernetes deployment or the uh, YAML file you're gonna to use to deploy this. So there's a, a few key things to get started. We're gonna run this as a daemon set so that it automatically instruments any new node you add to the cluster. You're gonna to need to run the container as privileged. If you are using a newer kernel version, it, you might be able to just add the BPF capability. I haven't tested this yet because unfortunately I'm stuck using 4.3, but on newer kernel versions, uh, the BPF capability should work. Uh, finally, you're gonna have the two main containers I talked about earlier, the init container to install the Linux headers and the BCC container to uh, run BCC or your own custom tool. So something that's super important is making sure you set the necessary resource requests. Um, something that I ran into personally is I didn't set an ephemeral storage request when I was first uh, testing this on like a test cluster I had. And when I installed the Linux headers it ended up eating up all of the ephemeral storage on the node. This caused a bunch of pod evictions and like some cascading failures from there. Luckily, uh, you know, it's just a test cluster so it wasn't that big of a deal, but definitely something you should be setting when you're uh, running this tool. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you mount the proper volumes. Uh, as you can see, the, the ones at the top are for the uh, ins installation of the Linux headers. That's basically gonna be used to grab your kernel version. Um, at the bottom, we're also mounting the module so that the BCC tool will run as expected. Yeah, and that's it. It's uh, you know pretty straightforward to get up and running with uh, BCC in Kubernetes. Um, Please check out the repo I have set up. Uh, you know, you can uh, get started with this super easily, modify the, the tool to do anything you want. Um, and there's, there's a bunch of cool applications in BCC you can use to analyze your Kubernetes cluster. Finally, I wanna give a shout out to kubectl trace for putting together that Linux headers installation script, as well as BCC for putting together a ton of awesome tools making it really easy to utilize EPF. Thanks for watching and please let me know if you have any questions.